A Mississippi state lawmaker who called for the lynching of Louisiana officials who removed pro-slavery era monuments has apologized on Monday. The move came after his comments sparked a firestorm of criticism. Republican Representative Carl Oliver took to Facebook on Saturday to criticize the removal of monuments in New Orleans, which city leaders deemed racially offensive. In May, I had a, a, a work retreat, and it was at that work retreat that I started to, um, I, I'd had the kind of a moment or a crisis of belief where I was like, I don't think it's possible for the change we're making. I don't know if that's coming. And um, my coworkers pushed me and they were like, well, why, you know, or what do you need to do? How can you make that a real reality? And I said, well, maybe I can start small. And they said, well, what's one small thing you think you could change? I said, I could remove Confederate statues, ah, 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 you know. And I said, well, they said, well, tr start there. And so I came home from that retreat and asked on Facebook, like, did anybody want to meet to talk about it? And that's how we had our first meeting plan. Marilyn Drow's big speech was after we started talking about meeting. Um, but it was definitely helpful because we were already in the midst of getting ready for June 20th when he wrote that letter about why the statues need to come down and the importance of understanding history and historical accuracy. But we did take our name, you know, originally we were Memphians for removal of Confederate statues. And so we took the name Take Em Down 901. I took that from Take Em Down NOLA because as much as uh, Mayor Landro, uh wrote a great speech and he actually did uh, remove the statues, make that step as the mayor, he erased, as we've seen happen here, he erased the role of Take Em Down NOLA, which was integral in campaigning to even make it an issue. So we renamed ourselves in solidarity. Um, and after I found that there were already a bunch of other take them downs, there's take it down St. Louis, take it down, take them down Dallas, Jacksonville, Richmond, Virginia. So all these other take them downs uh, in solidarity with New Orleans. Because we were in Home Depot that day, like buying tarp, buying wood, because we said we had to make a statement that we couldn't keep, uh, we'd had the pro the first one with Heather Heyer on the day that Heather was killed. Then that next week we almost got arrested. That night, we the seven of us showed up to the statue. Then we had the protest at uh, Jefferson Davis when Sons of Confederate Veterans showed up and people were marching them out of Jefferson Davis. Then the next day, uh, the uh, students at UT walked out. So there's that protest. And I was like, look, <laughs> we cannot, I was like, it, this could be 20 people, it could be 1,000 people. I think it's gonna be a couple hundred. What are we gonna do? And I was like, we can't keep calling folks out, y'all, and not do nothing. So we said we're gonna cover the statue. And we kept it to a very few number of people who knew, you know, because we wanted to, uh, one, the element of surprise for police and two like yeah that was a surprise for police um but that was going to be our statement you know it said take them down 901 on the and i remember when they were trying to get it up i was like oh my god this is going to be so beautiful when this happens <laughs> it never happened <laughs> I was sick. They tried to get me to go home. <laughs> and I was like, I can't go home. But that was just from the heat. That was from the heat. I mean, gosh, what was it, like 100 and something degrees almost that day? <laughs> that was probably the, the feels like. The high today was 94. Yeah, so the feels like. And, you know, there's no shade right in front of the statue. Mm -hmm. So from the time I got to the statue, I think I was sitting around on the benches. Um, and then just walking around, getting stuff together. And I overheated really quickly. Like, <laughs> had to go try to stand under a tree and could not cool down. And I think some of it was anxiety, stress, you know, wasn't sure like what we, what it was going to mean that day. I knew we were gonna try to cover the statues. So a little fear probably in there. So like everything going through my head plus the sun I was done for. Yeah. If I were leading a city, I would have said, stand down. 
because all you got to do after they cover that statue is in the rally. You know, everybody would have gone home. They would have taken some pictures with the cover statue and take the tarp down. Why risk? I mean, when the cops entered into that moment, they risked injury of people. They risked death of the people on that platform. I mean, people were hurt that day. There's photos of, like, folks getting dragged across the street, across the grass. People jumping in front of cars. Of course there was an emotional outpouring. And most of those people who were, like, angry and mad at the cops and following the cars and blocking the cars weren't, like, activist protesters. There were people who came there just to be in solidarity. And they saw how the cops descended on the statue. Those police officers... The city made the wrong call, and the arrest was called in. It was confirmed. It was heard over some. One of the marshals heard it. They were told to move in and make arrest. And when you talk about managing a city and you talk about caring about all people, those are the things that make me question that because all that had to happen was the tarp goes up over Nathan Bedford Forest. <clears throat> you say, all right, <laughs> time's up, we go home, and you take the tarp down. We I mean, somebody had climbed up on the statue, what, a week before that and put a dunce camp cap on them, and they took it down that same day? Why not the same with the tarp? I mean, what was the best days and the worst days? Yeah, I would say the worst days were the aftermath of the arrest. You know, folks didn't get released until about 2 p.m., 2 a.m. And we just, I didn't know what the impact or the next steps would be. Um, where do we go from there? And so, and it was just an emotional, I mean, the interact, I mean, the police bum rushed us, <laughs> you know, essentially for no, you know, and so I didn't know what to do with my, uh, the hurt, the anger, Images were coming out, stories were coming out, people were saying we were wrong, people were saying we were right. Um, it was just so much noise. Like, uh, that was a tough one. I would say the trip to Athens to speak to the um, Tennessee Historical Commission was a tough trip as well. One, it's far, <laughs> you know, but two, to drive that amount of time and then get there and, and to be called out specifically by commissioners from East and Middle Tennessee um, as Miss Sawyer, and they've already done their research and my name is already floating and, and they're not even calling the city out, they're calling me out, you know. Um, and then for a black Confederate to see a black man dressed as a Confederate general, that caused, that was an emotional trigger. And I believe that's why he is used the way he's used as well. Um, and then just driving home and coming straight back into a protest that night. Take them down! Take them down! I am Nathan Bedford Boyd. The night the statues came down was tough. I was excited, I was elated, and I was really sick as well. I had bronchitis and I had laryngitis. So I lost my voice, I had a fever, <laughs> you know, all this stuff was going on. Um, and I was elated, but that week following, there was just so much, again, it was the noise. Um, why is she, why was she a part of this? Like, Tammy's just doing this for fame, or she's just doing this to run for office. Tammy was working with the city the whole time. She got kickbacks. Like, I can show you my bank account. The city's not giving me anything, you know? Um, probably feel like, oh, them, <laughs> you know? And so... Uh, or, like, on the flip side, she didn't do nothing. Strickland did it all. You know, it was just all of these extremes. So I was excited that the statues were removed. I believed to deep in my heart that that would not have happened the way it happened had we not kicked up the grassroots movement. Um, but those were some of the best and worst of times. For the most part, like I, you know, the police know who we are on site. That's why that night we were at the park, but we were just there. We'd been 
talking and planning and we're like let's go see how big this statue really is and so we go down there and the cops showed up within like 15 seconds I mean what was it eight minutes um and they knew who was in there you know um but most of the threats but I've also you know it's interesting there are police who have come up to me and said like I can't be named but I support you can I get a hug to show you that like I'm I welcome the work you do in our city keep doing it you know I had a police officer tell me last week like you sure do keep us busy but it's the type of work I'm happy to do you know and so sometimes I think officers feel attacked until they realize like there's a whole system we're going after not you individually and the work that you're doing but overall you're never going to win anything if you keep yelling at the mayor you're never going to win anything if y'all keep protesting in the streets if you're always critical if you're always you know making noise you've got talent you've got you know skills why don't you just ride it out build your you know do some work and so I think what it is is that people didn't understand how much Memphians were hungry for change and so they took a path all their lives. If I do this, and if I do this, I can be mayor by 60. And God forbid that a, you know, black Southern woman, <laughs> you know, come in and say, you know, I'm, gonna just, I'm just here to fight. I'm just here to make change. And my star rises or awareness about who I am and the things that me and the people I'm aligned with do raises and opportunities come my way. When people call me Tammy Lou Hamer, I knew who Fannie Lou Hamer was at first, and the more I studied her after I, you know, got nicknamed after her, the more, like, I realized, I mean, she's a, you know, big black woman from Mississippi, and they tried to shut her up, they tried to beat it out of her, and they tried to tell her she needs to have a seat and let the men do it, you know, all of these things, and so now I look at her and I, I draw inspiration because like, you know, that could be me if I'd been, you know, if I'd been born into a different circumstance, but physically, you know, gender wise, racially, all of those things are things that people try to use against me um, and say, I need to have a seat, but I don't let them because I want real change in Memphis, economic change, um, educational change, um, equality, equity. Um, and I believe that part of that means that we need to change our political leadership. Right now we're all knocking on the door saying, hey, 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 let us in. You know, we know from the blacklist that the mayor can keep whoever he wants out of City Hall. Why would we not want to put people in office who can't be put on a list, whose voices can then be heard? Just today, I was reading someone say that everything that I'd done with the statues was in order to get a local office and then be able to run for Congress. Uh, it's been, she's running for mayor, she's running for Congress. One, if those are my aspirations, I'm allowed to have those aspirations. But two, everything that I've been involved with, whether it was leading or being participant, has caused a lot of change in my life. Um, it's been stressful on my parents, it's been stressful on my siblings, um, you know, it sometimes impacts my, you know, my, my professional work. Um, it takes time, it takes money. <laughs> you know, I self-funded taking four people to Athens, Tennessee, uh, while local clergy took a private plane. Um, and while the city of Memphis paid for, uh, you know, the mayor and city council to drive, you know, and so all of those things, I think people don't consider that it would be ridiculous for this to be the path that I ch am taking because I have a political agenda. In a city where we elect people who don't do anything, you know, or who have sat in seats for generations, for decades. You know, we have uh, a mayor who says, well, you didn't say anything about the other mayors, but wants us to forget that he used to be on city council for how long? You know, and so he's been a part of this decision-making process. Um, <clears throat> and so for people to believe that what I'm doing and if I am doing things and working to make change alongside friends and allies, 
Isn't that the type of leadership you want? I think the city could do a better job, you know, receiving the type of pressure that grassroots activists are, are giving to the city. I'm sure it isn't easy when you've made yourself believe that you are a good entity, you are good people. And, but the way that the city goes about erasing and suppressing voices is not representative of strong leadership seems to be a lot of fear in this administration um, of either being seen as colluding with people who are known to be activists and or um, you know just responding to that call how easy would it be after the fight for 15 instead of saying well we've got fifteen thousand dollars jobs i don't know what that's you know about would it be to be like well we've got fifteen thousand jobs but i do agree that we could be doing more it just seems like he's defensive. I mean, I'm not elected to any office. I get criticized every day. It's not an easy thing to do to be criticized. Uh, but what we do is we criticize policy and decisions. Um, what I try to do is keep it above the personal level, you know. Uh, my feelings about Jim Strickland relate to his leadership more than to who he is as a person. People respond with, oh, but he's a good guy. Uh, well, I'm sure Nathan Bedford Forrest was a good guy to the people he knew and loved. You know, we're all good guys to somebody. Um, and so I think that if there wasn't this personal, like, investment in proving us wrong or not colluding or not interacting with us, there would be an opportunity for some change. I mean, President Obama invited the people who were protesting him into the White House and put them at a table and gave them a task force, for better or worse. You know, that's one way to shut people up. <laughs>